Uh, for more on this, let's bring in former Deputy Director of National Intelligence and former Department of Defense Chief of Staff Cash Patel. Cash, your reaction to just the president's remarks, uh, and he was quite frankly very reserved <laughs> given, uh, given um, what has gone on today. <laughs> I think uh, it's great to be with you guys. I think he showed extreme composure at a time when any other American would have completely lost it. And I think that shows the brilliance of President Trump's ability to put the two-tier system of justice on display for all Americans to see in civil and criminal proceedings in state and federal court. And look, as a former federal prosecutor and a public defender, an individual who actually prosecuted and defended fraud cases, let's just lay this out as simple as we can. In order for there to be a fraud case, there has to be a fraud victim who was defrauded. And in this instance, as the president highlighted, this judge convicted him before the trial even began of this fraud and then made up monetary numbers to substantiate that judgment. On top of which, the president was denied a right to a jury trial because Letitia James used some statute for consumer protection fraud issues to prosecute Trump civilly that precluded him from a jury trial of his peers. So there are all sorts of constitutional issues with this, but what the American public has seen is a rigged system of justice against a political opponent of the DOJ and the state attorney general's office in New York, just like in Georgia and elsewhere, all to do one thing, rob American people of the decision at the electorate day to elect Donald Trump. Well, you know, Cash, it's interesting uh, watching Trump's reaction to all of this, uh, and, and you noted his composure. I think a lot of people would probably be freaking out if they just opened up a bill for $355 million. <laughs> uh, but it is remarkable how, um, it, what an opportunity it gives a guy like Trump that is so on brand for, uh, for political purposes. He can use this, as he did just now, to break into prime time on television and uh, make mm -hmm. yet another statement. And who knows how many people who either you know, don't like Trump or are on the fence about Trump, who, who are, are appalled at what they're seeing in the political process, uh, he might have he done him some good and, and won some voters over. No, what about, forget the billionaires for a second. What about the pizza shop owner or the bartender or the, yes. you know, um, fashion shop owner in New York City who dares to be an America First candidate, who doesn't want his stores robbed, who wants crime tamped down? I mean, Donald Trump probably just scored slews of victories with all these individuals. But look, I'm a New Yorker. I'm from Queens and Long Island. And I just saw a verdict which almost degrades New York City to the crisis we saw in the 60s and the 70s. And that's not a position I want for the town that I grew up in. But as Donald Trump laid out, this was a decision that was intentionally conducted by the elected officials in New York State. They don't care about the citizenry. They only care about the ability to control the political headlines and rob people of their safety and their right to have businesses in New York State. And Donald Trump's leading out that charge. But Charlie, as you just stated, he, this is speaking to people outside of New York. It's not just New York, which may be the epicenter of business and industry in, in America, but people across the country are saying, wait a second, if they did it there, is the rogue prosecutor in Georgia gonna take this up against Donald Trump or others wow. down in Atlanta? What about uh, in Chicago? Trump and the Trump Organization were banned for three years from applying for loans from any financial institution registered or chartered with New York State. The judge did seem to back away from a previous directive in which he appeared to order the wind down of some of President Trump's and the family's businesses. It's worth noting that Letitia James had sought to have President Trump bar be barred permanently from New York's business world. But this is something I want the viewers to hear Letitia James. Her goal, she campaigned on attacking President Trump. Watch this. No one is above the law, including this illegitimate president. I look forward to going into the office of Attorney General and then going home. I say one name, Donald Trump. That should motivate you. Will you, will you sue him for us? Oh, we're gonna definitely sue him. We're gonna be a real pain in the <laughs> He's gonna know my name personally. And Cash, she used the statute, the executive law, 
it gives her the rather than you know the courts and grand juries giving her subpoena power she just had the subpoena power to fish through private documents and then she could bring this a civil fraud suit for inaccurate statements discovered in the process <laughs> it's on the, the this law People have never challenged it because they're afraid of the repercussions of going after an attorney general. This could go all the way to the Supreme Court on the lack of constitutionality. Well, it's, you're right. It's absolutely unconstitutional. It's going to get appealed. I think all the decisions and verdicts will be put on stay, as we call it. But as you showed in this video, as a prosecutor's code of conduct under the law, you're supposed to present the case and the facts to the law and the court without bias. She just presented herself time and time again during her campaign that the only thing she had was bias and animosity for President Trump. And her outcome was predetermined. She wanted to remove him from New York and the ballot. As President Trump said, this is all about Election Day interference. And here's the irony of it all. A figure like Bernie Madoff, who's an actual criminal, when he was convicted, he was barred from practicing in the securities field ever again. But no one barred him from conducting business in the state of New York. <laughs> Are we to believe this decision that President Trump is somehow worse than Bernie Madoff? And this political prosecutor, Jackal, wants to ban him from the state of oh, New York, he who he's brought millions and millions of jobs to? Yeah. No, the judge said, and, oh, he's not Bernie Madoff, that he had to evoke that fraudster's name? That con artist's yeah. name? Go ahead, I, Charlie. And, and I think the most important thing uh, is the thing that you said a minute ago, Dagan, and that is that all of this is happening at a time when, uh, and you alluded to this cash as well, where, like, you can't walk down the street in New York without, uh, you know, g having a crime committed against you, it seems like. People are raiding stores. You can't go into a store and buy something because crime is so out of control here. And yet, that you have the, the New York Attorney General spending, and, and who knows how much money she spent pursuing this, this uh, case, uh, it's got to feel like that you, you, you're, you're in bizarro world. It's like a three ring circus. I, I, there's like, there's not a circus ridiculous enough to even come up with an analogy to compare all of this to. Well, I think you hit one of the, uh, the main talking points that I, I overlooked here. Her and the mayor in Chicago have something in common. They live in their own universe of protected influence. Yeah. The security details that the taxpayers kick in in the state of New York for Letitia James runs in the seven figures. She doesn't care about the state of New York City or its everyday citizenry because she lives a thousand feet above them with her own private security detail, cars, airplanes, and transportation. She doesn't ever go down the street and see the criminality of her own conduct. And that's the dichotomy between everyday citizens and what we have just seen happen to Donald J. Trump, and I think people across America are viewing this as a totally unconstitutional act that must be vindicated by the appellate courts. Otherwise, we will allow the weaponization of justice to be completed and rig presidential elections, and that can't stand. From Before we go, from a financial and economic perspective, this woman and this judge used a law that does not require fraudulent intent you don't have to <laughs> prove, uh, you don't have to allege a losses, we just lost cash, um, at a time th that businesses are leaving New York. Yeah. They took this law and used it against President Trump for political purposes. And what business would want to so, start a business? Exactly. If you run a business, big or small, in New York State, yeah. you have to know or assume somebody with a political ax to grind will come after you too. You better get the hell out of here.